What we got here is a UAV, which we use for the 3D reconstruction. It's an octocopter and has a still image camera on it. And here you can see the controls with a live view. We're using this system for 3D reconstruction. So we are flying up there, taking images. And from these images, we do something that's called structure for motion and basically make a 3D reconstruction out of it. Structure for motion is basically you find some salient points in the images and then find them in more images from different positions and with this information you can basically see where the images were taken and also extract the 3D structure out of that. This is a bit like when people use stitching on the mobile phone. I mean it's related to stitching because there also you find the correspondences but you really get the 3D structure which is very different. For stitching you don't want to move your camera. For 3D reconstruction you have to move your camera. That's okay, so why it's called structure from motion. Instead of having two cameras like a stereo rig, you move one camera from one to the other place and to other places and use this information to extract the 3D. And then these images are streamed down to the computer where the intelligence resides basically. So you <coughs> take these images, do the structure from motion, and get a rough idea what the structure looks like. From there on, the system can decide whether or not the user requirements are fulfilled. And if they're not fulfilled, it will decide where do I have to take more images so that it actually get what the user wants. So a complete 3D reconstruction with a certain resolution, certain uncertainty. And this is then done automatically. So it plans where it should go. Then you can launch the MAV. It flies to those positions, takes these images and updates its 3D reconstruction. With that information then, it can improve itself and make a new plan and decide whether or not it's fulfilled now. It's semi-autonomous. I mean, you have this planning strategy which you basically tells you where you, and it flies around, but you can intercept at any point of the pipeline. Before you launch the, uh, launch the MAV, during the execution, there's always, you always have the um, control with you and can intercept at any point. The, all, the only thing you have to um, also do, uh, tell the system is what is interesting in the scene. The system itself does not know that. This here is a scene where this represents some of the vegetation around the rock you want to reconstruct. It's taken an image and then judging from the image where the vegetation is basically. Here these markers are just used for geo-reference, not for the reconstruction itself. And you take images of this here and then we also learned how these different structures have to be treated differently because the rock is smooth and kind of easy to reconstruct. Well, these high frequency structures, you could call that, the vegetation is really hard to reconstruct. For that, you have to treat it differently. And our program basically learned how to treat it differently and uses that to improve the 3D reconstruction already in the acquisition, on site, during the flight. Over here, we have already taken some pictures of the scene. These points you can see here, and also where actually the pictures were taken from. And with that information, it knows, okay, over here, for example, there are some regions which are not nicely covered, and then it plans some views that actually these parts are covered as well. Normally, you can then just click start, and then it would go around and move and take these images for you. You always have to take care that it sees all the objects. For example, there might be kind of power lines or small structures, it might not see itself. So if you see it plans in there, you of course have to change the plan for them. So it's not like totally autonomous, we wouldn't do that. So there's always a human supervising it and saying, but it's really hard. If you just have this plan here and want to execute it without the automation, it's really, really hard. It takes a lot of experience and even then, you won't be able to get exactly the position. But for the system, it's very easy and it just helps you to get where you want it to have it. The hardware is basically off the shelf, but all the software was developed in-house in basically. So the whole component with the 3D reconstruction, the planning and the execution then is always then sent back to the UAV. So we're basically here dealing with the intelligence of the system, not the hardware itself. We're working in Ubuntu with um, partly open source, partly um, software that was developed in source and is commercial. Yeah. And 
Then we, your programming language is mainly C++, but we also have CUDA for um, accelerating it on the graphics card. Here you can see a reconstruction on the top is basically with our algorithm which learned to treat different kinds of um, structures differently. And here in the bottom is what happens if you don't use it. Your reconstruction becomes very sparse, only the really smooth surfaces like this rock here survive. The vegetation is basically missing everywhere. But with our software you can see even here underneath these trees here which are occluded if you just fly above it. It's well reconstructed here because the system decided, all right, over there there's an overhang, I have to take pictures to actually get that in. It doesn't know that it's really vegetation, it just knows the structure that is in the image is hard to reconstruct and I have to treat it differently. It has actually no semantic meaning in it, so it doesn't know vegetation as a word or anything. It just knows that it has to treat it differently. This software is kind of generic, so you just train it on whatever task you want. And also for like reconstru um, construction sites, you can use it and then evaluate how the construction site changed over time. Or well, other thing you can choose is just for ancient buildings. So basically the purpose is reconstruction. Whatever you want to reconstruct, you could do that, as long as it's some kind of static object. We'd like to thank Audible.com for this episode of Computerfile. And if you visit audible.com slash Computerfile, there's a chance to sign up for a 30-day free trial. They've got over 180,000 books to choose from. And having made this video about scanning rock, I went searching for a book on rock and came across lots of books on rock music. Now, this called to mind one of my favorite books, Espadare Street by Ian Banks. It's kind of dark shows how one band making it, their success, turns slightly to tragedy. So check out Espadare Street, sign up for your free trial at audible.com slash computerfile. Thanks once again to them for sponsoring this video. By subtracting these frames from each other, we can virtually shroud the influence of daylight. So we can even eliminate cast shadows which would be cast.